In this video, we're going to be covering 7.5, which is the section on work. So it has here the definition of work done by constant force. If an object is moved a distance in the direction of an applied constant force F, then the work W done by the force is defined as W equals F times D. F is the force directional sign included and d is the distance which is always a positive because the length cannot be a negative value example one says determine the work done in lifting a 50 pound object four feet okay so if you're having to lift it that means it's going to be going up which means your force is going to be positive 50. okay so your work is going to be a positive 50 pounds times your distance, which was four feet. And what you end up with is 200 foot pounds. Another word that scientists use for that is 200 joules. Okay, so every time we do these, we always wanna have it in foot pounds um if we can okay so now here's another kind of problem it says the definition of work done by a variable force so if an object is moved along a straight line by a continuously varying force f of x then the work done w by the force as the object is moved from a to b is given by this formula so the integral from a to b of that function dx and here's something we need to know for some of the problems that we're going to see. It's called Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law says that F equals KD, or F of X equals KX, where D or X, depending on which version you're using, is the distance a spring is compressed or stretched from its original length. And K is the constant of proportionality, also known as the spring constant, which depends on the nature of the spring. So there will be a way to find out what your function is to be plugging into this interval. Now let's try one um, in our second example. So it says here, a force of 30 pounds compresses a spring 3.6 inches from its natural length of 18 inches. Find the work done in compressing the spring A, a total of 3.6 inches, and B, an additional 3.6 inches. Okay. So we have a spring. This is where the spring starts, and I'm just doing my elementary drawing. This is the spring in its natural state. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is, is I'm going to apply 30 pounds of force going in this direction to compress the spring so that when I'm done, the spring will have moved in this direction 3.6 inches with a 30 pound force, okay? So what that does is that allows me to figure out what the constant of proportionality is, okay? So what I can say is that um, the force, which is 30 pounds, is calculated by K times the distance, and the distance it moved it was 3.6 inches. But remember what we talked about in the beginning. You usually want it in foot pounds, not inches. So how do you calculate inches into feet? It would just be 3.6 over 12 feet. Okay. So then I have, if I multiply both sides by 12, I get 360 equal to 3.6K. And if I divide by 3.6 on both sides, I get that K is 100. So for this particular uh, spring, 
we know that f of x is going to equal 100x, that constant of proportionality for this particular spring, okay? So, for part A, here's where we get to set it up. Um, you, everything's got to be in foot and pounds, okay? So, these measurements here need to be in feet. Now, if I'm moving it a total of 3.6 inches, what that means is just this figure here. So I'm going from no movement at all to 3.6 inches. That's all I'm moving. So zero to 3.6. And then here's my function in terms of x, dx. So I get 50x squared, right? That's 100x if I take the derivative. And then if I evaluate that, I get 3.6 squared minus 0 squared, which is just 0. So 50 times 12.96, and I get 648. Oh no, I'm sorry. I did, I, I said it, but then I did the wrong thing. I said these had to be in feet, right? So it could be in foot pounds. And I kept it in um, inches. I prefer to put it here in inches. So this should have been 3.6 over 12, but I didn't. So when I end up with this measurement here, this measurement is going to be my inches squared. If I want to convert my inches squared into feet, it would have to be one inch squared divided by 144 feet squared. Actually, one foot squared, one square foot is 144 square inches. So that these would cancel and I end up with 648 divided by 144. So I actually end up with 4.5. Five. And remember, 50 is pounds, right? So this is actually foot pounds. And we know that another way of saying foot pounds is just 4.5 joules. Now let's look at part B. Part B is a little bit different, okay? Part B is not just moving it that 3.6. Part B is taking the 3.6 that it already moved and then moving it an additional 3.6, okay? Which means how much have you compressed it all together? You've compressed it, um, I think 7.2, yeah, 7.2 inches. Well, what is that in feet? 7.2 divided by 12 is actually 0 0.6 feet, okay? And so I'd rather do the conversion here than to try to do it later with this ugly fraction and all of that, okay? So when I set up my formula, it's going to be from zero, the very beginning, and then move it over 0 0.6 feet total, okay? My function is still the same. So I get 50x squared from 0 to 0 0.6, and then I get 50, 0 0.6 squared minus 0, 0 0.6 squared times 50 is 18. So I end up with, oh, no, I messed up. It didn't say this all together it just said an additional 3.6 inches so i don't start here at zero i start here at 3.6 and then from that 3.6 i'm supposed to move an additional 3.6 so be careful in the wording because i just made the mistake um and i don't know what made me think that i oh i saw the zero here and the zero here and then that reminded me it said additional so if I'm only moving the additional 3.6 inches, I'm not starting at the beginning. I'm starting from 3.6 and going to 7.2. Now I know what 7.2 is in feet, 
but 3.6 inches in feet is 3.6 divided by 12 is 0 0.3 feet. So I should actually be plugging in from 0 0.3 here to the 0 0.6. So that means this value here is going to be 0.3 squared, which means I'm going to end up with 50 times 0.6 squared minus 0.3 squared, which is 0.27, and multiply that by 50. I get 13.5 feet or foot pounds, which is the same thing as joules. Okay.